live from the MGM Grand Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's The Q at Splunk.com 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Splunk. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Kelly. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE. We are live in Las Vegas for the Splunk Conference, dot conference 2014, hashtag SplunkConf. If you want to go to crowdchat.net slash SplunkConf, come join the conversation. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE Media. I'm here with Jeff Kelly, my co-host, number one analyst in big data with Heap On. And our next guest is uh, Garrett Zorigian uh, with Polycom. Welcome, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, John. So you hail from Boulder, um, Denver. That's a lot of news coming out of Boulder uh, these days. Great tech center there. Indeed. Great place to live. Indeed, um, yeah. So it I just want to say, love, love visiting. Um, really, really feel good when I leave that place. Um, um, so we're, you're at Polycom, you're using Splunk. I really like your use case, and I think um, you haven't spoken here at the conference yet, but we'll get a little teaser out. Um, you guys have been using Splunk and data specifically to really help expand your business. You're in the unified communication space, which is changing dramatically. It was you know, the voice yeah. business, and now with integrated medias, it's really an amazing explosion of change. So share with the folks out there the story of how you guys have used Splunk um, to really create value for, for Polycom. About three years ago, Polycom brought on the uh, Halo division of HP uh, as an acquisition. Uh, at that time, it was a one service uh, business. Since then, we've expanded it to uh, half a dozen or so different services over different types of technology. And Splunk has really allowed us to expand uh, our service capabilities uh, across all of those different services uh, through the use of, uh, of its analytics engine, but not only through analytics, but it, being able to alert uh, different, uh, to different scenarios that are happening uh, proactively, right? So I got, I got to, I'm one of these things, I'm, big, I'm on this big kick of, you know, riffing on like, and just exploiting the trend of data drives value, and real time is awesome, right? So, you know, this is what I think a lot of folks don't understand about the Splunk to the world, the tableaus, is that this new model that they have that's really in their platform generates a lot of value. So you essentially can go get data and essentially instrument the market you're trying to figure out. <laughs> that's essentially what you guys have done. Uh, how, what did it, how long did it take? What was some, uh, take us through the play-by-play, -play, if you will. Well, we, we started with Splunk uh, uh, as a break-fix tool. Uh, you know, we, we manage 48,000 different devices and uh, across uh, about 40 different customers. And essentially what we were doing is providing a 24-7 service that allows our customers to be hands-off with our video technology. And in, in order to do that, we need to be able to see what's happening across all of those different environments. Splunk has allowed us to, to build from just doing break fix analysis to doing proactive analysis to doing predictive operational performance. And that allows us to see before our customers even know what's going on that we have an issue coming up and we need to take care of it. That is then uh, taken, analyzed, we do what we need to do in order to fix the situation. Uh, it gets fixed, the customer never even knows that there was a problem. That's a huge selling point for us in terms of our managed services business. And using Splunk to go from a 40% uh, proactive detection rate up to a 67% proactive detection rate in uh, under a year has been uh, incredible value for us. And how does that translate to benefits to, to the bottom line? Um, are you seeing, sure. it's interesting, you mentioned, you know, the customer might not even know there was a problem that you, you kind of uh, cut off in the past, um, but if the customer doesn't know it, how do they know they're getting the value? So how do you how do you communicate what you're doing to customers, and and what how is that translating um, all the all the kind of proactive uh, work you're doing associated with Splunk and and helping your customers? How is that translating in terms of upsells or you know driving new business, uh, improved customer satisfaction, those kind of metrics? Uh, well, first and foremost, uh, we've been able to reduce. We're we're a service level. Um, agreement business, right? We have SLAs. If we don't meet those SLAs, we, we pay out, right? Uh, we've reduced those SLAs in under a year to uh, by 30%. Uh, 
Um, and that's been a huge uh, value. So that's, that's millions of dollars right there alone. Uh, and then you start talking about just the value of what we can share with our customers in terms of uptime in their video environment, in terms of proactive detection, uh, in terms of being able to resolve remotely the issues that, that they're seeing. Uh, all of those things uh, that, that Splunk, along with some other tools we're using, uh, have been able to, uh, we've been able to, to get there with, for our customers, which means increased customer retention, increased sales, so it's been uh, profitable across the board for us. Mm -hmm. Well, so the technology is one, is one thing, but the culture and the, the willingness to, to take a more data-driven approach is quite another. Um, we talk to a lot of enterprise customers, and they sometimes struggle with you know, getting the buy-in from either the executive, uh, executive level or even just among the departmental level in terms of making these more data-driven decisions. What was that journey like uh, for you and your organization to actually kind of start looking at data as an asset that you can be more proactive, you can be more analytical in the way you make your decision making? The sale to the executives um, really came from a, uh, a page out of Splunk's book. Uh, literally, there's a the exploring Splunk there. They talk about asking the right questions, right? We talk about the difference between structured data and unstructured data, and how uh, you know, unstructured data or structured data, you have to ask the questions ahead of time. Whereas with the way Splunk is doing it, we, we ask the questions afterwards. So I went to uh, our executive team and said, you know, if you could ask questions of all of our devices out there, all of Polycom's devices, uh, what would those questions be? What would R&D ask? What would marketing ask? What would services ask? Uh, and how valuable are the answers to those questions? And being able to layer the different types of data that we bring in from all of our platforms and endpoint devices, uh, from mobile devices, that has uh, really opened the, the eyes and, and, and the checkbooks <laughs> uh, so that we can expand what we're doing, not only within managed services, but within our own our services team for global support and as well as uh, our IT division. Mm -hmm. Well, talk about that a little bit more. So we know that from you know part of Splunk's strategy has always been to kind of land and expand. So traditionally in their customers, they land in maybe the IT department, maybe doing some security analysis or some log analysis, log data analysis, and then they expand to other departments within that organization. Um, and I think in, in their last quarter, they, they referenced a number around two-thirds of their upsell came from horizontal mm -hmm. uh, expansion. Uh, is that happening in your organization? And walk us through, how does that actually happen? Is it, is it you know, the guy from marketing coming over and kind of peeking around the corner and saying, what are you guys doing over there? Um, how does it actually happen on the ground in a customer like yourself? You're right, it is, it's a grassroots expansion. Um, I started uh, when I was uh, managing our, our global tier four team, utilizing Splunk to do just pure break fix analysis. Um, when I came over to the managed services team, uh, we started with the same thing. And then we started seeing that, well, you know what, we can uh, see these things happening in our logs before the actual event occurs. So why don't we take a look at how we get more proactive detection? We started building on that. Then I'm traveling to uh, the East Coast and talking to one of our service uh, operations center. Uh, I sit down and talk with uh, a technician and show her Splunk. And, and she's downloading logs, she's grepping those logs, she's you know, sweating over trying to do the analysis. Show her Splunk, how quickly she can find what the, what the problem was, and boom, you know, the, the, it starts spreading like that through the organization. Same thing with IT, we came in through the security organization. On the manager service team, we had a, a security guru that went over to IT. When he went over to IT, he brought his knowledge of Splunk that we were using over to the IT world, and they've started expanding on what they're doing. Uh, we're going to be now expanding uh, very soon here into uh, the Splunk cloud, uh, and IT services and managed services are all going to be coming into that with us. Another interesting point, because we heard in the keynote this morning, um, you know, a few things where, a few areas where Splunk is focusing their investment. One is around the mobile uh, application developer experience, cloud is another one now. Um, and Godfrey Sullivan, the CEO, mentioned that we really want to be, you know, deliver analytics for everybody, wherever your data may reside. What's your take on Splunk's strategy of going from you know, kind of a, a, a little bit of a niche uh, back in 2008, uh, kind of, um, uh, machine data analysis application provider to 
more of a, a general purpose platform for multiple types of data sources within an organization. Do you think that's the right approach for Splunk? And, and just kind of what's your, what's your critical take on how they're developing? Well, I think it's right on. Um, the, the, you know, I think they're addressing in, in 6.2 the challenges that we've actually experienced uh, in going through this. In my presentation tomorrow, I talk about how when you start with break-fix analysis, that's kind of, you know, in, in a dating, data mining operation, that's the sandstone. You can break through that stuff really quickly, and, it's, and you get value quickly. And then I, I, I akin the next level of getting from predictive uh, uh, proactive analytics into predictive and real-time business performance as the granite. That's where you really just have to keep pounding and pounding away with your data analysts, finding where those signatures are, finding the correlations. When Devani starts talking about uh, pattern detection, built in, you know, native in Splunk, it just makes me smile because we're spending so much time doing exactly that, trying to find those patterns ahead of time, trying to break through that granite and then reiterating that, that cycle. Um, being, having that just one feature out of all the others they uh, announced is, is going to be uh, great for us. Mm -hmm. So it's, as you see Splunk kind of add, continue to add value on the analytic side of the equation, um, that's where you're seeing a lot of, uh, that's, that's where you'd like to see them kind of continue to put a lot of their investment, um, it sounds like. Uh, what are some of the other things that you're looking for from Splunk going forward? Um, obviously they're a fast growing company, um, and they're putting all their, all their revenue really back into the company and development. So what are some of the things um, beyond kind of the analytics, are there other areas that you'd like to see Splunk start to invest more in or, or develop more? Um, you know, the analytics is key for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I had to come up with anything, I would just say, you know, for us, it's, it, we're ready to, to grow rapidly with Splunk. And you know, looking at the pricing model, you know, different uh, ways of, of doing, you know, allowing us to, to expand that way. I think it's great right now, it's even better with the cloud, um, but we want to go from gigabytes of data to terabytes of data, and, and you know, having a vision for that and, and knowing what our cost structure is going to be so that we can you know, work on uh, you know, total cost of ownership on these different things is, is going to be a big help for us. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, as you grow, and so you're, you're expanding, and we hear about, we cover the, uh, you know, the so-called big data space here at, at Wikibon and theCUBE, and we hear about, obviously it's about volume and velocity of data and the variety of data, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm curious to get your take as a practitioner. How do you see these new approaches, Swunk being, I think, part of this new modern approach to data analysis, how is it impacting the more traditional world of enterprise data warehousing, business intelligence, again, we saw in the keynote kind of the Compared side by side, uh, Godfrey Sullivan, the CEO, kind of the old model of BI. You've got to, you mentioned earlier, you've got to know the questions in advance when you're modeling those scenarios. It takes time, it's expensive, versus this new, more agile approach. How is that manifesting itself in your organization? Is there um, tension between kind of some of the newer things you're doing with Splunk and maybe some of the other more modern approaches? And the EDW, uh, what's your take on how that's going to kind of play out and where the two, what the relationship is going to be like between the two? Well, for for us at Polycom, I, I, I really see the need to uh, build more native integration into our applications uh, so that we can uh, tie into what Splunk is doing on a, on a more ser of a serviceability level. Um, and be having you know, that our development teams uh, really behind what the vision is around serviceability as a company and really growing on the foundation that Polycom has laid down in servicing its customers uh, by being able to build into our development cycles a, a partnership with Splunk, right? Where by we can easily deploy all the different devices and you know, what Splunk gives us now uh, through that unstructured data approach is the ability to take all of our different devices and put the data on top of itself and correlate the different pieces of data to understand what's going on in, in our customer's environment. And that is a process, that, like I mentioned, we go through break fix, pr uh, proactive detection, uh, until we get to operational performance. And that's been hard for us. It's, we're spending a lot of time in terms of our data analytics team going through that. The easier that becomes for us, the, the better uh, we'll be at servicing our customers. Mm -hmm. And that's going to come for me from not only from what Splunk is doing, uh, and like I mentioned, the pattern detection, but also what we need to do in, at Polycom in terms of developing so that our data coming out is more usable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask you our final question. I appreciate uh, you coming on. We're tight, we're tight for time, but uh, 
If you had to share some of your best practices and secret sauce of working with along with other folks out there, um, what's the experience like? Give the give a taste of you know how how easy it is to work with them. Give them the, and give them some a letter grade. Give them you know take us through the you know checklist. Are they doing good here? Doing here needs improvement. How would you rate? the Splunk experience and share your successes and best practices? Um, so far, so great. Um, the, uh, the experience. A minus, B plus, I mean, <laughs> come on. I mean, if you get new businesses out of it, you oh, got to give them an A plus on that. I, I give nothing less than an A plus. I, you know, it's uh, what we went through over the last year to get where we are um, has been made a lot easier because of the partnership we've had with Splunk. Uh, the accessibility to the team at Splunk uh, Brian Gilmore has been an incredible asset for us to have uh, in bouncing ideas off of. But it did come to a point where, you know, we, that first start, we, when we first started with Splunk uh, and we were building the platform, we were building the architecture of it all, that was great. We had people from Splunk come in, they helped us out with that. We built a really solid um, infrastructure to utilize Splunk on. The hard part for us is um, pushing through the, the correlation analytics, right? Uh, layering all that data and understanding, because it's our stuff. It's, it's our machines, right? It's our devices. And only Polycom really truly understands what's going on there. So Splunk can't help us. However, they can six, enable you. 6.2, pattern detection, that makes a huge difference. That takes, that reduces Feed our extractor. workload tr tremendously. Well, I got to say, um, you know, love Splunk, love their product and the, what they're doing, but I think the key thing that you bring to the table as a use case, in my opinion, is in changing businesses, you see Unified Communications certainly is, is, is changing and transforming, or folks in other companies that like realize that, hey, getting real-time data, using the, your own data to really get and put business, identify business opportunities, new business opportunities, not just existing, so it's existing and new. So that's the real IT focus right now. Okay, fix and break, and all this break, fix stuff, fix existing stuff. Mm -hmm. and do more, right. and then identify new opportunities. And I think the value for that is in the data. So you guys have really showcased a great example. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, we're here inside theCUBE, live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back after this short break.